Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter number 6. Mark, chapter number 6. We'll look at verse number 45. Just hold the verse there. I'm not going to read it right away. Amen. I believe that we can clearly say that on this the Lord's Day and every time that we gather together on the Lord's Day that we come to celebrate what God has done for us. Amen. So this morning I think is a celebration. And uh, I believe that when we hear folks say what God has done, we know that God is able. If He did it for one, He can do it for others. And, and uh, uh, if you will permit me, I, I want to speak to a certain group of people this morning. And uh, I'm not going to say their exact age, and I'm not going to, uh, I don't know their identities actually for sure, uh, but, but, but this group of people, uh, there are many differences between them, but there's many similarities because at one point in their life they fail or they've had a setback or uh, they faced some criticism. Things didn't go their way. Uh, they feel too young to quit. Yet they feel too old to start over. Wow, what a group of people these are. Uh, it's the people who sometimes can feel stuck in the middle of their life. Wow, stuck in the middle of their life. And so uh, they're uncertain how to move forward. Uh, they don't know how to claim their mountaintops. And uh, vice versa, they just kind of feel stuck in the middle. And so I pray that God would help this group of people this morning to kind of feel stuck somewhere in the middle. Let's read. The Bible says in verse number 45 of Mark chapter number 6, the Bible says, and straightway, or that word means immediately, he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. So here we find the word of God says that Jesus has sent uh, these folks away. And so in the middle of their, their life, uh, they've seen some good things happen, but he sends them away. Uh, let me just say here this morning, has anyone ever heard of a man named Lyndon B. Johnson? You know, he took the presidency at a time where uh, if there was one thing when he was interviewed, when he became president, it was because of unlikely circumstances. The time that he wanted to run to be president anyway, uh, we know that uh, 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 he got a late start and uh, uh, he, the, the John F. Kennedy had already sown seeds and got him way far ahead. But if uh, Lyndon B. Johnson had been asked, why didn't you uh, get there to the presidency and run? Why didn't you get there sooner instead of these unexpected uh, shootings, uh, things happening uh, uh, before he was able to uh, enter in as the president? He would have said it was fear, fear of failure that didn't allow me to get there sooner. I wonder how many of us, if we would look at our lives, Hopefully, unlike the events, doesn't have to happen. Uh, hopefully, there's not death and shooting and those. Sometimes it's the fear of failure that keep us from going where we want to go and where God wants us to go. I call it being stuck in the middle of life. Spiritually, why aren't we where we should be? Physically, why aren't we where we should be? Oftentimes, it's because of fear that can paralyze us. Paralyzed uh, not by failure per se, but the very thought of failure. What would happen if I failed? The bondage of what might be or what might have been. And so here it is. 
that it has been a very good day for these disciples. There's not been failure in their life. They've just watched Jesus turn five loaves and two fishes into a meal for 5,000 plus people. I mean, they've just seen God do great things. And so there's really no celebration party. There's really no uh, a miracle party. Uh, uh, there's no time to celebrate. In fact, Jesus dismisses the crowd and he says to them, I want you, the disciples, to get in the boat and I want you to make your way across unto Bethsaida. And I'm, I'm going to go to the mountain and pray. The people are leaving. I want you to go. And, and, and the word constraints here, it's not a suggestion, but it was a commandment. Jesus said, you need to get in the boat and you need to go to Bethsaida. I've just spent 5,000. You've just witnessed a miracle. And so they're obedient. And they go. Maybe somewhat of a hesitation. The Bible says that it constrained them to get into the ship. Maybe they were reluctant. But nonetheless, they were obedient and they got in the ship and they went. And so here it is. They said, the Bible says that they set sail and, and, and it was evening come and the ship was in the midst of the sea and he was alone on the, on the, on the land. Verse number 48 says that he saw them toiling and rowing for the wind was contrary unto them and it was about the fourth watch of the night that he cometh unto them walking on the sea. So here it is that this, the disciples are very obedient to the command of God. They get in the ship and they're rowing. But Sister Dietrich, the rowing is being pushed back by the wind. So it's like they're treading water. They're just kind of staying right where uh, they are. They're wanting to make progress. Uh, they're right in the middle of the sea. Uh, there's no land. Uh, uh, it's the middle of the night. The wind is howling. They find themselves somewhere between the launch and the landing, if you would, right in the middle. How many of you have ever found yourself in life there, right in the middle of life? It's not starting, it's not launching, you're certainly not landing, and so you're somewhere right in the middle. We find ourselves living between the cradle and the grave. We find ourselves between start and finish. We find ourselves in the middle of the deep blue sea. You ever said that to yourself? I feel like I'm in the middle of the deep blue sea. I believe that God has a message for us. The same thing he did for his disciples. And there's some things that we can learn. It's interesting because if you ever read the book of Matthew, and I trust that you have, you'll find that that book starts out talking about Emmanuel, God with us. And it finishes out with, with, with the great commission of reading that, that God is with us. And so we have the bookends of Emmanuel, Jesus being born, and we have the, the great commission of Emmanuel, God with us. But we find our life is somewhere like the book of Matthew, somewhere in the middle between the bookends of knowing that God is with us. But I need to tell you that God is with us even in the in-between, in the middle of life, in the middle of our circumstances, in the middle of our situations, that God is there as well. He's not just the beginning, He's not just the end, but God is in the middle. How encouraging for us this morning to know that God is there. You see, uh, Paul dealt with that. This He said, ye did run well, but who did hinder you? Somewhere in the middle, you stopped running. You knew that God was with you in the beginning, and you knew that He was going to be with you in the end, and you were seeking and you were following God, but in the middle, you did run well, but hey, who hindered you? You see, some people fail between the beginning and the end, somewhere in the middle. If we were to look at our days, we would look, and Sister Tina, if I would say, what's the middle of our day? You'd say, well, this is middle, that's noon. Hello, 12 o'clock noon is the middle of the day. Whether you really want to analyze it greatly or not, what would be the middle of our night? Midnight. Hello, it's pretty simple. Am I boring you already? <laughs> but somewhere in the middle, some folks fail. Hold on, let's look at the failures. We're gonna we're gonna look at some positives here in a minute. But 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 we find that did you ever notice that 
that there was some prophets of Baal and they were out calling on their God to consume by fire. And the Bible says that it got to noon. They had cut themselves, they had shouted, they had done everything. And at the middle of, uh, of the day, noonday, Sister Demetri, they frustrated, they quit Terry at the middle of the day. You see, it was also, Jesus told the, uh, uh, the virgins, uh, the, those that were wise and those who were foolish, it was at midnight that the five foolish virgins ran out of oil. They failed. Their source was exhausted. They had a very good beginning, but they could not see it through. Do you remember Saul of Tarsus? He was persecuting the Christians, and on noonday, on the road to Damascus, he was exhausted of all of his labors because he met with the master. Uh, it, 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 was, it was destructive. Uh, do you remember David said, uh, the destruction that wastes at noonday, it's the heat of the opposition that gets people. See, sometimes, if we're not careful, in the middle of things, we can lose our grip upon the promises of God, of knowing that God is faithful. Our doubts begin to make our grip weak on the things of God. Our fears begin to make the promises get slippery and we slide off of them. And, and, and so how many of us, you can say, listen, I know someone who started, but in the middle of it, they quit. We cannot afford to, in the middle of life, quit on the things of God. In the middle of our service to God, we cannot afford to quit. The, the, the psalmist says, he speaks of the terrors that, 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 that are night and the destruction that wasted at noonday. It's the middle of things that oftentimes give us trouble. I love in the middle of my work day, I love in the middle of my work day getting past the halfway mark. Any of you like that? I'm halfway through, yeah. Because we can get discouraged in the middle of things. You see, it's the mess of the Mediterranean. It's, it's the halting at halfway. It's the mid-step of, of, of midway. You see, uh, even in the middle of the garden, it was Satan that got to Adam and Eve in the middle of everything. It was that tree in the middle. It was the middle of life. It was the middle of a man, a woman, uh, that, that the enemy came to and got to. So in the middle of things, we cannot allow the enemy to lie and deceive and trick us and get us to give up on the promises of God. But we've got to hold them tight and trust that God will see us through even when we're in the middle of things. How many of you are in the middle of things, in the middle of life, in the middle of raising children, in the middle of your jobs, in the middle of caring for folks, in the middle of serving God? We've got to hold on. In the middle. You see, it was in the middle that Abraham, he runs to a strange country. You see, it was in the middle of Christ's passion that you find Peter, he runs off to a fishing hole. It's in the middle of things that oftentimes people give up. It's good to take the focus off of Christ. That's right, brother. Christ. We've got to get our sights upon Jesus. But I need to tell you that although there are some failures in the middle of things, the Word of God is full of examples of men and women who succeeded in the middle of it all. You see, Moses, he wasn't a spring chicken when God spoke to him at the burning bush and God gave him new direction and he grabbed hold and he said, in the middle of it all, I will follow God. How about his predecessor, Joshua? Joshua was no young man when, when, when Moses went off the scene and God called to Joshua to take up and, uh, and lead where Moses left off. You find that it was in the middle of life between the, uh, the, the, the bondage of Egypt and the promised land that Moses even led the children of, of, of Israel. It was John Wesley. He said the most productive time of his life was in the middle years you read that John Bunyan, you know that great story that he wrote, Pilgrim's Progress, it was in the middle of his life that he wrote that. Uh, Patrick Henry, when he said, give me liberty or give me death, he was in the middle of life. Amen. So it's in the middle of life that we got to grab hold of the things of God and we've got to run. It was the Wright brothers in the middle of life that they developed that wonderful idea uh, that we could get on a, a, a a piece of equipment that looked like a bird and it would commute us quicker to, to places that are long distances. 
in the middle of life. And so, if I were speaking to nursery children, or if I was speaking to folks who were at the very, very, very final flight of their life, I would choose my words more differently. But I believe that everybody here this morning is in the middle of life. In the middle of life. So what are they going to do in the middle of life? I want you to know that in the middle of life, that God is there in the middle. I want to read something that was written by a lady named Barbara Bombeck. She's known for her humor, but she wrote this uh, during uh, a time of disease. She said, if I had my life to live over, listen. If I had my life to live over, I would have talked less and listened more. I would have invited friends over to dinner, even if the carpet was stained and the stove was faded. I would have eaten popcorn in the good living room and worried much less about the dirt that someone uh, 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 would see if the fireplace was lit. I'd just light more fires. I would have burned uh, the, uh, the pink candle sculpted like a rose before it melted in storage. I would have settled along with my children and not worried about grass stains. I would, have cry, I would have cried and laughed less while watching TV and, and more and more while I was watching life. I would have shared more of the responsibilities carried by my husband. I would have been, uh, there would have been more I love you's and, and, and more I'm sorry. But mostly, given another shot at life, I would have seized every minute and I would have looked at it and really seen it. Seen it as it was. I would have lived it and I would have never gave it back. You see, we've got to hold on to life. Even if it's right in the middle. And that's where we meet the disciples at this morning in the Word of God. They are right in the middle of the sea. Right in the middle of things. They were trying to pull ahead, but they were being pulled back with the same consistency that they were pulling ahead. You see, there was contrary forces that was driving them back. Have you ever felt like in your life that it's hard to make progress? You know, you feel like you're not making the progress that you want. You're trying to push ahead, but it seems like with the same inertia, something is pushing you back. You see, uh, uh, God wants us to know that right in the middle of our dilemmas, that He sees us and He's concerned about us. When we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter number 3, we find them being cast into uh, the fiery furnace. But we see that right in the middle of the, the king looks at, and he sees not three, but he sees Four men in the fiery furnace. And you see, it reminds us that God shows up in the middle of our uh, adversity. Uh, life can bring us adversity. There can be problems paying bills and making momentum and getting where we want to go. And we call that adversity. There can be setbacks, losses of loved ones, and, and, and journeying with folks on their difficult journey. There can be health setbacks. And there can be all kinds of adversities in life. But God wants us to know that in the middle of it all, He is there. Amen. And if that's what this morning is just about, letting you know that in the middle of life, God is there. That you're trying to do your best. Amen. God is there. You see, I want to tell you something. Sometimes a decision in our life just keeps us stagnant in, in, in this place where we never move, we never go. How neat of God that when He created the Garden of Eden, He put the, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right in the center of them. And so God was speaking something to us. He was telling us, Amen, when you choose to be obedient to me, I'm in the middle of your choices. Amen. When you choose to be obedient, I am there. I need to tell you that when you choose, you're walking with God and you're talking with God and you're looking to the Word of God and you're seeking God in prayer and you make a choice. I want to tell you that in the middle of life that God is with you. Amen. There's no halting, but God is right there. He's in the midst of standing with you in the middle of choice. Praise God. He is there. He's a present help at a time of need. 
the disciples discovered something in the middle of their storm. You see, I'm not sure that they really discovered who God was in the middle of the breaking of the loaves and fishes that they just came through. They knew all about how amazing that God multiplied, Brother Josh, those loaves and fishes. But they would find out really who God was a moments later in the middle of their night when the storm was raging, when they were trying to make progress and it wasn't happening. They were between the launch and the landing. They really found out who God was. See, God shows up in the middle of our time. I believe that's because of uh, 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 the devil puts fear in you. That's right. And loses your, loses your focus on Christ. That's, that's what I find out. It's like when I was in the hospital right away when they said you had a tumor. Or wait, it was cancer in your mind and you had to keep your focus on Christ. Amen. It comes, uh, fear comes to steal the joy and the peace that God gives you. Amen. So that's, that's what I learned. Amen. You know what? God loves to bring peace in the middle of our chaos. He loves to bring order. He loves to show up in the middle of our pain and in the middle of our suffering. Brother, you're exactly right. It's easy for us to know that He is the Alpha. He is the beginning. He is the Omega. He is the end. Uh, but God wants us to know that He's everything in between as well. And He walks on the water of our soul in the in-between. Amen. See, it's interesting that we look at the Word of God in the Old Testament and we find that David wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant back and he brings the Ark of the Covenant back. And there in his little ephod, he dances before the Lord. We know the story. His wife, Michael, was looking out. And we can say several things about her that, 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 that was pride and, and certainly it was. And, and certainly it was that, uh, that, that she was... Uh, giving him criticism as well. But I believe that part of what God did not like about Michael was this, is that she was a spectator and not a participator in the things of God. I need to tell you that in the middle of life, God doesn't want you to be a spectator. Amen. But God wants you to be a participator in the things that He has in your life. In the middle of all my troubles, David said, God delivered me from it. God wants us to participate with Him in the middle of life. God's a, God's a hands-on God. How many of you learned really well hands-on? Amen. We can read a book and we can understand. But man, let me just get my hands on it. Let me do it. Amen. That's what God wants to do in the middle of life. He's a hands on God. So here it is. When the boat, unforeseen circumstances, prevents it from achieving its goals. Right in the middle, Jesus shows up. See, I'd like to tell you that when I read these verses, I see this amazing amount of faith. But I don't. I don't see these disciples with an amazing amount of faith. I see here something that is absolutely amazing. I see Jesus telling them, get on the wall and go. And in simple obedience, they go. See, it's not the great faith. It's not the courage. It's not the fearlessness. You see, I don't even see lions, bears, and giants being conquered. All I see here is just simple faith that is being exercised and obedience to Christ. I am obedient. Night came, they still rode. Christ said, go. The winds blew. They still rode. Fear came. They still rode. Uncertainty and anxiety probably came. But they still rode. They were simply obedient. I love that old hymn, Trust and Obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. In the middle of life, what does God want from you? Obedience. It's easy in the middle of life to put aside the authority of God's work. In the middle of life, it's easy to start listening to everybody else's voices. In the middle of life, it's easy to give in to fear and anxiety. But God says, obey. 
he told the disciples to go. And so their responsibility was to obey, believe God. James says it this way. He said, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. He talks about that we deceive and we betray ourselves when we are hearers alone, but we're not doers. Amen. In the middle of life, God wants you to do. He wants you to be a participator. Don't just sit back and say, well, Brother Seville preached this and the Bible says that. And my brother or sister said this or that. No, what does God want you to do? He wants you to participate in faith with Him and be obedient to Him. See, we can Hollywoodize Noah and Moses all we want. There's movies about them. There's things that we can look at. But the bottom line with Noah and Moses is, is that they obeyed. It was extreme. I read a story about a man who was weeping one day over his dog who had died. Listen to the story. I'm not saying that you're the dog. I just simply want you to listen to this dog. He said, I worked outside with this dog all my all the dog's life. He said, but if I told the dog to do something, the dog did it. He said, and I told him that day, you stand by this tree, stand by my lunchbox. He said, never did I know the forest fire was going to go there. And he died because of obedience. Someday, each one of us will die. We don't have a choice. If the Lord should tarry, every one of us will die. You will die. This week, we saw one of the greatest influence in America, Christianity, went on to his eternal war, Billy Graham. I loved Kathy Lee Gilf Gilford, is that her name? Yeah. If you saw what she, did any of you see what she said about him? Yeah. I was so enthralled and thrilled of her tribute to him. It was absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'll never be able to do it like this. She said, all I can tell you is I was saved because of the Billy Graham ministry and my family. She said, I need to tell you that Billy Graham died, but he died in hope and he lived in Jesus. She said, you know what made the difference in my life when I held my dead husband in my arms is because I knew that he was dead, but he was alive. She said, I want to tell you who Billy Graham is. If you here knew that there was a cure for cancer, would not you give that cure? Cure to everybody that you could. You wouldn't keep it a secret. She said, that's who Billy Graham is. And that's who we are as believers. There's a malignancy of our soul called sin. But there's a physician called Jesus who can heal it. And if you've been healed by the physician, when you die, you will go on to live life more abundantly. Can I tell you that every one of us will die someday. But the most important thing is, is that we die in obedience. You may die in the middle of life. Amen. You may feel like you're rowing and you're getting nowhere because forces are coming against you that are unseen and unknown. But if Christ has said go, you got to go. He's given each one of us the power of choice. Right in the middle of the garden was a tree. Right in the middle of life, He gives us the power of choice. But we've got to make choices in the things of God and by the grace of God and by the Word of God. And when we make our choices, we've got to move with them, even if it seems like we're standing still. Amen. See, we can count on Jesus this morning. God is looking for our simple <laughs> obedience. The story is told of a bus driver, Brother Eli, who was driving through the storm, and all of a sudden the tree came down upon a power line and it came across the bus. The bus driver said to all those students that was on the bus, he said, I want every one of you to get to the center of the bus and stay right now. I don't want anyone touching the sides of the bus. All the students moved to the center of the bus and they listened to the command of the bus driver. Power on that power source was cut and it was determined that if any of those children would have moved from the center and reached out to the side of the bus, they would have surely died. But they listened to the command of the one who had authority over them. 
You see, they went to the middle and they stayed to the middle. This cross is about keeping us in the middle of life. And his command is stay in the middle. Amen. When you feel like giving up, keep going on. Don't let your anxiety overtake you. Don't let your fear overtake you. Don't let your fatigue overtake you. Don't let your progress overtake you. But I commanded you more than anything else be sought out to the simple obedience to what I say. I don't know what your choices are. We're all different. That's what makes us great. That's what makes us powerful as a church. Because we are all so different. When we come together collectively, we are mighty. We have great resources. We have great knowledge because of our differences. But as different as we all are, every one of us is in the middle of life in a different situation. And I want to encourage you this morning. Just be. Lord, your, your testimony this morning was powerful. You did what you knew to do. You followed the command of God. You found us peace last week. You were doing what you do to do to take care of your body. You did that. But in the middle of it all, no matter what doctors... And Laura told me, she said, I don't care what the doctors and nurses says. She said, when I go back to that operating room, I'm going to be praying. And she was exactly right. She was praying. Who cares what the doctors and nurses says? They're wonderful people. And they're there working for, 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 for you and for your betterment. But it doesn't matter what their opinion is to your simple obedience to God. Lord, we've got to be obedient. And so this morning, just be obedient. It's not in the great, big, wonderful things of life. The loaves and the fishes multiply. But it's somewhere between the launch and the land. The beginning and the end. That we find God. So find God in the middle of the room and just be faithful. In the middle of the sea. I need to tell you that you'll find, and I'm closing with this, there are four watches according to the Roman count. The first watch, was, which is between 6 and 12. The second watch, which is between 9 and 12. The third watch, which is between 12, midnight, and 3 a.m. And the fourth watch, which is 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Bible, in the Word of God, says that Jesus came for the first watch. So somewhere between six and nine? No. Well, he came during the second watch. Between nine and twelve. No, my friend. He came on the third watch, Brother Seville. Somewhere between midnight and 3 a.m. No, my friend. He came on the fourth watch. Somewhere between 3 a.m. and 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. The fourth watch. The middle was far past, but they were faithful in the middle. He came and found the Lord, and God seemed him to go to the other side. He brought peace. In the middle of it all, stay encouraged. He may not show up to the fourth watch, but when he shows up, your simple obedience allows him to execute his great over the details of your life. Would you gather in this morning? For all those in the middle of life, would you gather in? Would you just be obedient until God moves for you? Amen. Let's find a place of prayer. We want to pray this morning. Let's gather in. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Just be faithful in the middle of it all. Just be faithful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. God's looking for simple obedience. God's looking for faithfulness in the middle of life. God is faithful. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you are faithful. You are faithful, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are faithful. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout out God in the middle of your choice. Amen. Be faithful. Amen. God's giving you the power of choice. Know that He's seeing you through. Amen. When you make choices. Amen. That bring glory to His name. Hallelujah. Faithful in the middle of life. Hallelujah. 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 Holy Ghost minister this morning. All around the doctors. Sir, man, live. In the middle of life, God, be faithful. Hallelujah, God. I pray that you would encourage this. Even when you don't show up to the fourth watch, God. Hallelujah. I want to hold on to the promises. Amen. Let them hold tight to the promise. But you're not going to let it slip. Hallelujah, Jesus. But you're going to keep the promises. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. 